Before we start the show Beautiful People Connect, our community invites you to take a quick second to subscribe to our channel by clicking below. You will be able to get notices and be the first to see our new content. As a subscriber to our channel and community, we invite you to like and share our content with your family, friends, and colleagues. Welcome to the Beautiful People Rise Up channel, and most of all, thank you for joining us. Now let the show begin. To beautiful people connect where we connect with beautiful people who are making a positive difference in the world i'm chastity wright ceo and founder of nonprofit organization beautiful people rise up inc beautiful people connect is made possible by creator entertainment nonprofit 501c3 organization beautiful people rise up inc and inspire me yama llc we have a new theme and we are excited about it it is the story the rise, the prize. Before we introduce our special guest, I'm going to turn it over to Yama of Inspire Me Yama to set the atmosphere on fire and share with you why we chose the theme, the story, the rise, the prize. Yama? Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for joining in with us today or tonight, whenever you're joining in. We truly appreciate you joining in with us. We want to talk about our theme, the story, the rise, and the prize. We're talking about your story. We're talking about his story. We're talking about their story. We're talking about those things that empower you to feel good enough about yourself to get up, go out, and do what you are called to do. We are talking about you not only telling the story, we're not talking about you only rising up, but we're talking about you obtaining the prize. And tonight we are going to fully and completely continue to cheer you on to get your prize. Oh yes, the story, the rise, the prize. That's what we're looking at today. And we refuse to break down. Nothing is gonna stop us. Nothing is gonna shake us. Nothing is gonna move us. We will get our prize. Chastity, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so oh. much, guests. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Yama. You always set the atmosphere. There is no one like you and I love you dearly. Thank you so much for your positive energy. Now, our guest today is a creative with an innovative media company that has a unique mission and vision. The vision is expanding and awakening the masses to knowledge and wisdom through his creative works. He is here today to talk with us about his story, his rise and his prize. I am honored to introduce our special guest, Mike Grimes of Five versus seven media. Mike. Mike, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. Well, wonderful. Well, welcome. Uh, we are so excited to have you on Beautiful People Connect. So um, we're excited to talk to you. So we're going to jump right in. Um, to talk about your story, your rise, your prize with our viewers. So who is Mike Grimes and what was your vision and mission for creating Five Versus Seven Media? Um, for me, just as a little kid, I've always been passionate about comics. Um, I'm an artist, comic book artist. I love drawing. Wanted to be a comic book artist, but, you know, life chose, you know, a different path for me. Um, for a certain time, but as I got older and probably around 2014, 2015, I did start to see a shift in the comic book industry where there was a lot of independent comics coming out, independent black comic creators. But one of the things that I saw was a lot of the comics creators were making comics that were sort of like the black version of Superman or the black version of Wonder Woman. 
And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to focus on comics that told the history and the legacy of indigenous um, cultures, indigenous cultures throughout the continent of Africa, um, indigenous cultures throughout the continent of North America, South America, Australia. So that was going to be my focus. And so that's what led me to um, start working on that. At the time, I hadn't had a name yet, but then I was thinking about it because I was starting studying other things. So, um, and a lot of spiritual systems or just different um, cosmological, metaphysical, you know, the numbers five and seven represent and mean different things. And so for me, I said, okay, um, five versus seven. And so in a lot of uh, concepts, spiritually uh, and it, religions, you know, there is a, humans, sometimes we have a struggle of constantly trying to align ourselves with the divine, with the higher power. And so a lot of times, uh, five meaning, you know, it can either help you or inhibit you in that with the five senses. You need all of those to uh, move and navigate throughout the world. And like I say, you can either use those five senses to help you get in alignment with the higher power and the divine, or you can use those five senses to, to move back. And so that's where the five comes in. And so seven in a lot of uh, spiritual systems and religions aligns itself with, with deity. Um, you know, in a lot of spiritual systems, you have, uh, you know, seven Orisha, seven archangels. So the concept with five versus seven came up, whereas there is, I wanted my stories to, through being exposed to these indigenous cultures, help people to grow and get in alignment, to take them away from things associated with the five and help them move more toward things associated with the seven. So when you read my comics, if you are not asking questions, if you're not having to, you know, have your phone out, whether you're Googling, want to learn some of the terms, um, then I'm not, I'm not, my comic books are not serving its purpose because it's, it's, while it's entertainment, I want people to learn. And really it's about when you read my comments, taken away with a sense of empowerment and how you can, you know, better not only serve yourself, but uh, become a better person. You can, you know, better serve your family, you know, the community and the, the broader world um, in view, because I believe once you know and understand yourself, once you know and understand and respect other people, other people's cultures, their history, then a lot of things that we see in the world today will take care of themselves as, as far as the ills. That's kind of what I believe in. Mm. You know, um, love yourself first, because I can't love you if I don't love myself first. So once I learn to love myself, then I believe um, certain things wouldn't allow me to, to do to another individual or another group of people. Um, so that's kind of the inspiration for my for my comic books. Um, and I believe every every culture and every people has a right to have their their story, their story told, um, their history told, their spiritual beliefs told. You don't necessarily have to agree with them or align yourself with them, but at least, you know, just become knowledgeable. You know, so that's that's kind of been my focus and the angle that I I take my comic books. Oh, that is awesome, Mike. That is very awesome. I love the analogy um, behind the five versus seven. Uh, one of the things I love about seven is the number of completion as well. And what, the way you broke it down, it just really works very well together. Um, I wanted to ask, what are the early influences on your writing and how do they manifest in your work? So some of the early uh, influences on my writing um, even when I was young, I've always uh, just been very interested in other religions, other cultures. So throughout my youth, I, I studied um, different religions. Um, of course, I you know grew up Christian, but you know I studied Islam, studied Rastafarianism, Hinduism, Buddhism. I just always had a fascination about um, what others believe, 
And even though there are some differences, sometimes if you peel back the layers, you know, sometimes people overlook the similarities. Mm -hmm. um, certain religions and certain spiritual systems. And I'll admit early on when I first decided to start doing comics, I was going to go down the traditional uh, superhero route. But then I was like, you know what? At that time, I was building my library. I was reading different books, different books, like I said, on different religions, different spiritual systems, uh, financial literacy books, accounting books, motivational books, uh, Black history books, African history, um, Aboriginal history. And so what really inspired me in terms of what, not only what I wanted to write, but how I wanted to write the stories and the scripts was just really wanting to expose um, different sides of different people and different cultures to the broader audience. And doing it in a way to where um, I believe the more you learn about a people or a group of people, their history, their past, their struggles, like I said, I believe the more you, if you yourself are, like I say, love yourself and write for yourself, the more, you know, you, you can tend to, to understand and have, you know, compassion. And like I said, I, I just think that uh, people take the time to learn about one another. Um, some, a lot of these social ills that we have just wouldn't, wouldn't be an issue because uh, you, you, certain things should move and motivate you not to want to um, cause certain harms or, or, or certain stress, you know, to another individual or another group of people, regardless of uh, their skin tone or their particular belief. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I believe we all are, you know, manifestations of the divine. And I believe every person on this earth has that connection and they deserve to be treated as such. Cool. So that's been my inspiration. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was a, a beautiful response. Um, imagination is a beautiful tool to explore the fantasies of the mind and create without limitations. You have various character and characters and stories like Marvel and DC Comics. What was the starting point for you creating these stories and, and the characters? Because you have multiple. If you go to your website, um, I did want to show uh, the audience, um, just one of your comments, you know, after you respond. Um, but, you know, what, what was that process and, and what was that starting point? Um, for me, um, like I said, when I first really wanted to start writing comic books and creating characters, you know, I was racking my brain and you know, trying to figure out, you know, uh, potential next big, you know, famous superhero you know how how unique can I make them you know um you know and then I started to realize um I mean to be honest with you in the comic book industry whether we're talking mainstream or even some of the independent ones um that's 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 done already that's been done already um I believe that ship has sailed in terms of you know characters you know mind control flying and you know that, industry, that, that certain part of the industry is locked down. And so I said to myself, you know, um, the stories are in other people's cultures, their beliefs. I don't have to sit here and rack my brain um, trying to, you know, come up with the next big thing. Let me start telling um, African stories. Let me start telling um, Aboriginal stories, uh, other indigenous culture stories. There's so much wealth of knowledge and content in just those in just those people's stories, their history, their mythology, their spiritual systems. That I mean, you I can you can you can't run out of content. I mean, it's it's just an endless amount. I mean, even if I just wanted to just stick with the continent of Africa, there's so many stories that can be told. Just learning about the different tribes. Uh, Dogon and, and the tribe, which is my first comic book based off of, I mean, within the country of Mali, you got so many different other groups outside of the Dogon. If I just wanted to just stick with 
the uh, country of Mali and just dive into their different ethnic groups. I mean, <laughs> it's um, it's just so you don't have you don't have to go you don't have to look in hard. Matter of fact, the uh, the Nigerian team that I worked with, they was like, man, how did you come up with such a fascinating story? I said, I didn't come up with this stuff, man. I said, this is this is the Dogon's history. This is their mythology. I just took what I've been studying, what I've been learning, and just through entertainment, just retelling their culture and their history. And, um, wow. And so that's when I said, you know what? Let, let, me, let me stick with that niche because there's a lot of untapped resources with that, with that niche. So, you know, that has been my lane moving forward. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, what, how, you know, you've been writing for a while and you were talking about the different cultures that you, you studied and you were with. Could you share with our audience, with myself and the audience, how does writing change you, the writer? Um, for me, um, even when I was young, um, all my uh, elementary, middle school, high school, even college teachers, you know, they was like, uh, you, you need to be, you need to do something in, in the field of uh, whether it's becoming an English professor or an author, because they always said, um, I had a gift for writing and that my writing style was something that was unique and that it it captures people. And I remember when I was getting my master's degree, um, I, I was taking a project management course and we had to do a report. And, and you know, she came up to me. She was like, you know, um, for this to for you to be in a program, a master's program dealing with technology and everything. She said, when you when you did your, your research paper, your report on, on project management, you have a way of writing that just captures captures people and captures individuals. And so for me, ever since I was little, writing for me has always been very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. My mind, I've, ever since I was little, my mind just always running, it's always racing. You know what I mean? I'm always just thinking. And so writing allows me to kind of um, give my mind an outlet and do it in such a way where it allows me to also express that creativity. Um, so for me, it's, it's, it's one of my passions. I enjoy it. I enjoy writing. Um, I enjoy creating stories. It's, it's therapeutic. Um, nothing like it. You know, you've had a long, stressful day. You know what I mean? Just sitting down and just putting things on paper, you know? And I've, yeah. it's helped me over the years because it has it's, it's extended beyond um, just for um, writing stories and in and, and comics, you know, it's extended to, you know, journal goals. Um, you know, you, you guys, you know, spoke about a lot about motivation, um, speaking and helping to motivate people. It's, it's transferred into that for me. It allows me to, you know, write down my goals, you know, write down certain things that help me to motivate myself and, um, and I've enjoyed doing it and I've even enjoyed, you know, extending that talent on, on it, on helping other people, you know what I mean? Because uh, not everybody um, can put what's going on in their mind um, and translate that on paper where it can, uh, not only other people can understand it, but they can also, you know, benefit from it. So you know, it's, it's been, I've been really been enjoying that journey. That's awesome. So what starting point advice would you give to um, the creative who desires to write, publish, and promote comic books? Uh, the first thing I would advise them to do is just get started. Um, part of the thing that I've been having to learn as an individual, it served me well in the technology space, in the engineering space where you know, you have to plan and, and you have to plan the plan. And then once you plan the plan, you have to double check the plan. And then you have to, you know, critique the plan. And you have to make sure this is right and that was right. And that's a good skill to have in, in, in the tech space, especially in the engineering space and design. But in the creative space, 
if you find yourself just wanting to just constantly dot your eyes across your T's, you'll never get started. You know what I mean? So, so my biggest advice to anyone wanting to um, start on this journey, just, just get started. Just get started. And I will tell them, you know, make the motivation not be um, how much money can I make? You know, make it a, a personal goal. Make it something where how can what I'm doing help someone, help inspire someone, even if it's just one individual? You know, because I'm pretty sure you ladies understand it as well. Um, passion about something is what's going to keep you going when that money don't come in. You know, because this first issue cost me $3,800 to produce. And I've been in Dogon and the Model Mafia has been out since 2018. And I'm about a thousand some odd dollars away from just recovering my cost. But for me, the point of starting it was just getting it done. For me, I was like, if I don't even make a, a one cent off of it, you know, this, this is something I want to do. This is something I want to put out there so that it can inspire others. And I will say I've, that goal is starting to be, be accomplished. Um, I was fortunate enough to where um, the comic book caught some attention. So I was able to do a, uh, a little exercise in the course with the, uh, a group of young black engineers out of New Mexico, where I was able to, it's, it's good that I'm an engineer by trade, but I was able to show them how they can apply that engineering mindset to anything they want to do. Anything, whether it's, it's, it's their passion or their goals. And so I want people to, when they want to get into the comic book industry, um, even if it's on the writing side of it, because I can draw, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to help bring others along. So I said, you know, instead of me, yeah, I can save all this money and draw the comics myself. Let me find a team um, where they're good illustrators. They just may not be good storytellers. And that's how I was able to link up with the team in Nigeria. And at the same time, able to provide them a means of um, caring for their, for their everyday uh, living expenses. Um, because, you know, U.S. dollar goes a long way over there in Nigeria. So I've all, I started out with the mindset of just how can this help the broader collective? And so that would be my advice for them starting out. If you're not passionate about it, um, don't, don't get into it. But if you're passionate about it, start there. You know, like you guys say, you know, start there. Um, the higher power, you know, it, it has you, you know. Um, and if, you, if your heart's right and your heart's pure and you're passionate about it, um, the, the money will come, you know, you know, the money will come, you know, the higher power that, you know, they'll, it'll, it'll bless you. You know, that, that, that should be something, the least of your concerns or your worries, you know, if, if, if it's something you want to do, and I believe it, and we were talking about this earlier, anything in life you want to do, if you're starting at it from a pure heart, and you're on your path, everything else will flow. You know, I believe if if I was met with a lot of resistance in, in doing this, then I would know, okay, this this is not for me. Or it's not for me at this point in time. You know, so um, that would be my advice to, to anyone wanting to start out in comic books or just anything that they want to get into. Um, it's gotta be, it's gotta, it's gotta start in your heart first. And everything else will fall in place. That's yeah. awesome. That's a very, very, very positive word. Um, you know, outside of comics, outside of engineering, just a life lesson, you know, just some some words and wisdom and advice. And when you don't have passion and you do something, you most people do quit. You know, I I, I think going for the passion 
is the thing. I have a quote on my on my wall, and I'm looking right at it. Um, it says, "Fight for your power." Excuse me, fight for your purpose, not the money. And that's by Eric Thomas. Let's say that one more time. Fight for your purpose, not the money. So when you're passionate about something, you're going to do it regardless. And I, I think both of us, myself and Yama, we we've done things that we passion we've been passionate about, and not necessarily making the money. Now, there have been things that, yes, you do when you make the money, but the thing that you want to really, really do, I, I second that notion to stay encouraged and motivated on the things that you're passionate about and the doors will eventually open for you because you're, you're consistent, you're persistent, you're determined, you're driven, you're courageous in that moment and you don't give up. So I, I definitely um, agree with you on that. Uh, Yama? Well, I, I do as well, Mike. And I love what you were saying about how writing makes you feel. Um, I, I have this um, interview, say, with Walter Mosley uh, in the New York Times, and it's Writers on Writing. And he was talking about how, you, you know, if that's what you want to do, you have to touch it every day because you know, words will come to you every day, but so does the muse. And, and, you know, basically when I interpreted that for me, writing meant peace. So does the peace come from me writing every day when I can and when I just get away and I still away and I allow my mind to be the creative and exploratory mind that it is. I love it. So I really thank you for, for being so transparent uh, with your answers. I appreciate that so much. Um, I do have a quote. My, my last question is what's next for five versus seven media? Um, what's next is right now we're working on issue number two of Dogon and the Mali Mafia. Um, we're working on releasing a um, couple of more titles, Low of Viridia, uh, Ganga Ray, um, and Low of Viridia, that's dealing with um, ICNs and, and the struggles that they've been having going on since, you know, the uh, revolution of uh, 1804. And then Ganga Ray, that is dealing with um, the Afro-Brazilians and their struggle, you know, since the slave trade and getting into the uh, martial art known as Capoeira. And then a couple other titles I have coming, uh, Muddy Waters. That's when we're gonna dive into the Gullah Geechee culture. Um, expose them a little more and not only that but just also some of the environment issues that they're struggling with down there number one the flooding and number two as often we have seen it in our communities where at some point in time and we see it with gentrification where where we live or where we reside is it, undesirable and then things shift and then things change and then other groups now see what used to be considered a place they wouldn't want to live, you know, prime real estate. And so a lot of their ancestral land is being taken um, for real estate development. So I kind of want to get into that and just expose people to what's going on there while also, you know, telling the story behind, you know, the rich story behind the Gullah Geechee people. Um, those are the things that I got going on as far as projects. Um initiatives that I would like to do as these things um, get going is this is what I had help with some of the young kids um, with Nesbitt. Um, that's the uh, engineering group. But I also try to do this with each first issue I release is uh, young ones that are inspired um, by the comics. Um, what I'll do is whatever they want to draw or create that's, that they're inspired by the comics. Uh, I pay them industry rate um, for their, you know, commission art. And then I put it in a special edition um, release of, of that particular comic book. And another thing that I really want to get going is to help spark that creative process. Um, we started that with the Nesbitt um, organization, whereas a group of young writers, elementary, middle, high school, doesn't matter where, um, I allow them to come up with an alternate ending, you know, for the comics. And then that alternate ending, 
show them and, and take them through the creative process, how to outline, how to do the script, really get into their imagination and then take that issue and then whatever organization they're a part of, the proceeds, you know, go straight to them um, so that they can start to see, you know, something tangible, you know what I mean? Uh, this is, you know, something that was birthed from your imagination to now you can physically, you know, you know, touch it um, and, and see it. And so um, ultimately I, I do want this to be something where um, it inspires not only the youth, but just people in general. Um, like I said, I, I started back in 2014. So I was in my late thirties um, when I decided, hey, you know what? I've always had a passion for comics. I've always wanted to be a comic book artist. Uh, who says I can't start, you know, I can't fulfill that purpose and that dream now, you know? And so it's been, it's been going really well. But long-term, that is what's next. Hopefully, in addition to that, video games, uh, maybe uh, movie deals. But if all said and done, the main goal at the end of the day is I want five versus seven to be an instrument of inspiration and a blueprint um, for others to follow, you know. Uh, and whatever they want to do. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you thank so you. much, Mike, for being on Beautiful People Connect. Thank you for sharing your story, your rise in the prize. Thank you for sharing words of wisdom and encouraging our viewers to get out and do the thing that they've always wanted to do because we have so many people and I meet people all the time and I'm sure Yama does too, but they, they want something, but they're not taking the next step to get it or achieve it. So they keep it in that spiritual realm in their mind. And so the whole goal is to be able to pull that thing out of your mind and manifest it into this, this, this physical realm so other people can see or hear or touch with one of their five senses, your ideas. And you may be surprised at what could happen if you focus in and create and put your ideas out. I mean, beautiful people connect um, is an idea that I came up with. Yama has been very instrumental in helping this vision to go forward. Beautiful People Rise Up Inc., the nonprofit that I started, was inspired by my song, Beautiful People. And I almost didn't even com complete that song. You know, I was like, man, is this corny? You know, is this just, I'm, I know that's like an old word, but I'm just, just <laughs> trying to make, make it like, oh man, is this, you know, could this be relevant? And I, I shared it with a friend of mine. He's like, man, that's a beautiful melody. That's a beautiful song. And so that encouraged me to continue writing that song and just from that one idea evolved all of this to where I'm talking to you right now. I'm on the, on the line with Yama. And had I aborted that idea to complete that song and go through that process and do the music video and all the different things that I did, I may not be here in this very moment. So you don't know what that seed is going to harvest in the long run. So I encourage anyone who's watching, you know, go after your goals, go after your dreams. It doesn't matter your age. Mike just mentioned, hey, I was in my late, you know, 30s in about 2014, and I decided to press forward. And even if you do it just for yourself, that is very important. When I did my first music video, Cha Cha Cha, you know, I did it for myself. I'd been singing that song since 2014. And it didn't come out into 2018. You know, I just had so many different things that happened with that one song, but I, I just really believed. And whether it hit the charts, whether it's number one or not to anyone else, it was number one in my heart. And I'm able to pull that video up and watch it anytime and say, you know what? It wasn't a record label who told me I could do it or I couldn't do it. It wasn't um, some investor that said, hey, I'm going to give you all of this money. You know, my, my good friend of mine, he helped to fund 
the project show music. He's actually out with his current project. So, you know, you can look him up, but you know, we believed in this, in this thing. And so you don't know what the end result is going to be from you stepping out and who you may impact along the way. So I do want to say thank you again. And I want to say to our audience, if you were inspired by this event, we invite you to like and follow us on social media, which is at BP Rise Up, and that's B-P-R-I-S-E-U-P. And that is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Beautiful People Rise Up, and you'll see other great videos and the ones that are going to come soon. Um, we also list our upcoming events on our website, which is www.beautifulpeopleriseup.org. And I do want to say thank you to all of our global viewers for tuning in to Beautiful People Connect. We hope that you were inspired and most of all motivated to action in your own personal lives. You have something special to give to the world. So hopefully you stand up and stand out to make a positive impact on people. Until next time, connect, charge, and let's rise up to light the world together. Have a beautiful and blessed day, beautiful people. Thank you.